Okay, now I'm going to show you how to use the raster calculator. And the raster calculator is a very complicated tool, but what I want to do is just use it to make Boolean rasters. And of course, Boolean means 0 and 1. So we're going to ask it a kind of question, a logical question, and it's going to return on the raster in space 0 or 1 for whether it's true or false. So let's say that I want to have a place where only the values of places that are flat or in my world, let's say less than five degrees of slope, um, where those places are, because those are the places I care about. So what I'm going to do is go up to Raster Calculator, and I can say, okay, slope, where slope is less than five, right? And I can put my output layer, and I think I might call this, going to make a new folder too. I'm just going to call this booleans. It can get unwieldy. You can make tons of raster files really fast, so it's good to kind of put them in one place. I'm going to call this flat. Okay, save. So flat, geotiff, that's great. Where slope is less than 5. I'm going to say okay. Let's see what happens. And you're going, oh my gosh, what does that mean? That's so confusing. Well, first of all, let's change the color from white because that's also the color of the background to something else. So I'm going to go to my properties here. And in my properties, I'm going to find a completely different thing. We're not, we're not in vector land anymore. The raster is just one attribute per location in this case. So in order to symbolize that, you're seeing all these kind of options. And usually when you spread like in the DEM, when we we're going from white to gray to black, it spreads values across the whole thing. But right now we just have two values, 0 and 1. But what you might have missed is that even though we have 0 and 1, we're in a floating point data type. So it's actually representing 1 as 0.99999 for some reason. So what we're going to do is, in order to just change these two colors, I'm going to go to the pseudo color again. And... Um, Instead of just hitting classify, it's going to give me a bunch of random values that don't really mean anything. I'm going to go to equal interval and go to two classes because there's really only two numbers, 0 and 1. And just hit classify on any color scheme. And let's just see what that does. Interesting, right? Besides the fact that this color makes my head spin, um, let's just go a little lighter, you know, like that. Okay, so now we can kind of see, aha, so it looks like zero, meaning not flat, steep, right? Zero means steep and one means flat. Um, all of the locations that are flat have been made into one, and all the places that are steep are zero. So what's cool is that we could make a whole bunch of Boolean rasters from different parameters, and we can multiply them all together or combine them in different ways. All right, I made one called south, so true where one is purple and um, zero is kind of orangish red. This means yes, it's facing south, and I said plus or minus 30 degrees to 180, um, and zero is everything else. So, and again, this is showing up like this, even though there's only two values, because it, it knows that this is a float raster data set, so it's assuming it must be an elevation model and want, it, it thinks that we want to paint tons of different colors across, um, kind of across all the values, but um, however you want to deal with that is fine. So long as you get two different colors for the booleans, it's, it doesn't really matter. Now I'm kind of thinking, now that we've got our south and our flat, I might actually want to combine um, maybe I only want my house to be in like woodlands or something like that. So I'm going to go to drag in my main land cover. So here's my la main land cover. And I think I want to show where the woods are. And if I open up my old uh, metadata file that I had on that, I think I'd find that forests are... Uh, it looks like 9 is deciduous, 10 is evergreen, 11 is mixed. Let's do 9, 10, and 11. And in logical terms, we have to be careful because and means it has to be both, and or means it can be either or. So 
Um, let's just take a look. I'm going to highlight these and change the colors. We want nine, right? Nine, let's make them all red so we know what we're talking about. Uh, just so that we make sure we see all the types of forest and like that. So I say OK. It looks like we have tons of forested land in this part of the state. <laughs> um, wow, craziness. OK, so in order to isolate all of those places, I'm going to use raster calculator again, except this time I'm going to say where mainland cover data set equals nine or mainland cover data set equals ten or mainland cover data set equals eleven and if I call this for instance woods and I say okay I should get a boolean that covers all that red right up. Cool. So I think what I'd like to do is, yeah, we can zoom in and compare. That looks promising to me. And what you'll notice, it's kind of interesting. What are you noticing about what happened there? Um, can, you, can you tell me what you think's going on? Hopefully you can see that the grain of the Boolean and the grain of the mainland cover data set are different. Now, this is really important because we've been working with not the mainland cover data set. We've been working with this other data set, everything that was derived from the digital elevation model. And you might not see it at first, but the digital elevation model, can you see these pixels here? Are are also from a coarser data set than the man lane cover data set. So it's taking kind of the most coarse part of uh, the most, sorry, the most coarse piece of information we have and saying, well, none of your analysis is going to be any better than this. And so we're going to make your uh, conversion that you're trying to do in raster calculator to that same level of detail. So it's important to know that for a raster calculator, for instance, to combine all the, these booleans now like we want to do, they all have to line up like egg cartons on top of each other, right? So Q is doing a pretty good job. It's actually on the fly interpolating our rasters so they all line up together. So that's not always going to be that easy in the future, but we can thank them now for, um, for instance, with over here, we've got a stretch of probably road that isn't woods um, and you can see how that kind of gets muddled here at the coarser uh, the coarser kind of grain so important to know go ahead and combine these booleans in whatever way you think is interesting um, I'm going to probably uh, multiply mine to get places that are only all south-facing woods places that are flat just to see what happens so I'm going to do that, and I'll see you on the other side. I call this ideal spots. And I say, OK. So just from the elevation model and the main lane cover data set, we've come up with this kind of ridiculous um, looking thing that tells us, aha, um, these spots are very nice. They're south facing, they're in the woods, and they're flat. Maybe you want to build a house there, right? Um, I think it would probably be more meaningful to look at this on top of a, um, a terrain map. So uh, maybe go ahead and make a terrain map or make a base map from one of your, one of your web products here. 